Springbok Ecology. The natural environment provides organisms with six main resources: water, air, soil, plants, animals, and fossil fuels. All these resources are interrelated and they work together to help organisms stay alive. Population ecology is the part of ecology that focuses on the factors influencing the population size, growth rate, growth forms, distribution of individuals inside a population and so much more. To help you understand this a little bit more, we're going to focus our attention on a single species. The springbok is the national symbol of South Africa. It has dark stripes that extends across the white face from the corner of the eyes to the mouth and a dark patch on the forehead. It has a distinct chocolate brown stripe that runs down the middle and on the side with a pure white belly. The tail ends in a short black tuft and on the back is a special pouch. The skin along this middle of the dorsal side is folded in and covered with 15 to 20 cm of white hair which can be erected. On the back it has a light brown back. The male has an average weight of 41 kg while the average weight of a female is about 37 kg. Biodiversity is the word used to describe the variety of organisms found on earth. These organisms adapt to survive in their environment. Scientists organize all known life forms into a human-made classification system by arranging them into groups that have similar characteristics. When we look at the springbok, it first falls under the phylum Chordata. There are five anatomical features that is used to classify organisms in this phylum, including a notochord, a nerve cord, a pharyngeal slit, and an endostyle and a postanal tail. Then it falls in the family Bovidae, which is your cloven-hooved ruminant mammals, and all the males will have horns and some of the females will have horns. And then it has its own genus, Antidorcas. In earlier times, millions of migrating springbok or trekbok in, in Afrikaans formed herds by the hundreds of kilometers long that could take several days to pass by with ossevans or ox wagons. In 2013, Eva Barman of the University of Cambridge and her colleagues undertook a revision of the phylogeny of the tribe Antilopini. on the basis of nuclear and mitochondrial data they showed the springbok and the genera rook forms a clade while the saiga is a sister taxon the springbok is probably the only true gazelle found in subregion of south africa this beautiful antelope inhabit the more western reaches of southern africa Species interaction within ecological webs include four main types of interaction namely mutualism, commensalism, competition and predation. Because of the many links among species within a food web, changes to one species can have far-reaching effects. Smaller species have been hypothesized to be superior competitors because they may be able to subsist on sparser shorter vegetation intraspecific competition within the springboks are both for resources and a contest as winner takes all males defend territories in areas where polygyny potential is highest during the rut females are attracted primarily to the resources on the territory and not to the rams themselves but only males that successfully defend their territories would breed with females polygyny is a mating system in which one male lives and mates with multiple females but each of the females will only mate with a single male
The concept of a niche is central to ecological theories and can be influenced by abiotic factors, food preferences and microclimate. Competition is a driving force in the evolution of adaptations that enable niche partitioning. The sum of the characteristics that determine the position and role of an organism is called the ecological niche. It can be determined by the needs of the organism, the available resources for survival and the adaptation of the organism. Various steps need to be followed before a species becomes unique. It needs variation, isolation, selection and a long time to take place. The springbok inhabit the dry areas of South and Southwest Africa. In the far north, the subspecies Antidorcas marsupialis angolensis is confined to the Namib Desert in Angola. North of the Orange River lies the savanna biome. It stretches from the Kalahari in the northwest to the low felt in the northeast and southwards to the low-lying areas of KwaZulu-Natal and the Eastern Cape. But the eastern border of Gauteng province is as far as the springbok will be found. Antidorcas marsupialis hofmeyer is the common subspecies found in this area. In the savanna habitat, the vegetation is predominantly grasses and trees. The springbok feeds on grasses and has the ability to meet all of their water needs from the food they eat, such as flowers, seeds and leaves of shrubs before dawn when the food item, items are on the most succulent. The coexistence of species is a fundamental concept studied in ecology. Inherent in it are the concepts of niche and resource partitioning. The large herbivores occurring in the biome are adapted and partition their food resources successfully. For example, wildebeest are grazers, while springbok are mostly browsers. The leopard is an ambush predator found north of the Orange River. It relies primarily on surprise to overcome its prey and seems that their size and the solitary hunting strategy limits the prey that they can capture. Leopards prefer to kill prey of between 10 and 40 kilograms found in small herbs or in dense habitats because it minimizes the risk of injury during a hunt. Another area the springbok is found in is the Namakaru, the area of transition between the Cape Flora in the south and the savanna in the north. The subspecies Antidorcas marsupialis marsupialis is found in this semi-desert area. The most prevalent predator here is the cheetah. The cheetah is a pursuit predator, often chasing their prey for more than 300 meters. Both stalking and chasing are important components of the cheetah's hunting strategy. The sprint speed of the springbok is strongly related to their vulnerability to the cheetah. They have agility, a great speed, intensified sense of sight and smell, sharp teeth, as well as claws, and very good camouflage. In order to survive this, the prey also needs certain strategies to help them, including herding, good camouflage, warning coloration, though not in the springbok, and secreting poisonous substances, though again, not in the poor springbok. They do use herds as an anti-predatory strategy, where being organized protects them. Strong individuals are found on the outside and weaker ones in the middle. And when they have to flee, they, they move as a unit. Human-wildlife conflict occurs in areas where humans and wildlife occupy the same area and predation of livestock is an increasingly common form of this conflict. In farmland areas, the livestock replaced small to medium ungulates 
in, for example, the diets of leopards. And this has reached a lot of farmers um, these days. So I really do hope that you have learned something new about the national symbol of South Africa, the Springbok. If you did, please like and share and press that subscribe button so that you can get more videos like this. Also check out some of the videos that I have made on environmental studies and uh, natural selection, whichever one takes your fancy.